President. Sir. Mr. President. Call of Duty will forever be a series I hold close to my heart. While I've spent hundreds of hours in the more recent outings, I lived and breathed Modern Warfare 2. I was a new dad back then, so there were plenty of late nights and time away from work. It was a near-perfect shooter, but with every new release, my time dwindled from one to the next. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War might just be the one to drag me back in. It's an excellent shooter that is filled with a decent campaign, tons of multiplayer modes and a fantastic zombies package, and I'll definitely be playing more as time goes by and new content is added. The campaign isn't going to go down as one of the best, let's be honest, but Treyarch has tried to make it more than just an add-on to the main draw of Call of Duty, which is the multiplayer. Tasked with stopping a mysterious Russian known only as Perseus, you must track him down before he sets off multiple nukes and causes untold destruction. You play as a guy known only as Bell, but you can customise him to be somewhat individual. You'll give him a name, choose the gender to be male, female or non-binary, and add a couple of perks like doing more damage or reloading quicker. As a direct sequel to 2010's Call of Duty Black Ops, you'll work alongside familiar faces like Alex Mason and Frank Woods, but the new characters, specifically Russell Adler, are the main people at play. In terms of its story, there's little that feels new. You must work towards stopping a nuclear holocaust, you know, the usual end of the world type scenario. That's not to say it doesn't take some interesting twists, especially as you uncover more about who you are and what role you play in the bigger picture. Some missions involve all-out warfare, while others see you sneaking around East Berlin as you try to uncover secrets to where Perseus is hiding and who he actually is. One mission sees you playing as Colonel Dmitry Belikov, a CIA agent who has infiltrated the KGB. Sneaking around their headquarters while taking down guards and hacking into computers adds a nice change of pace from all the shooting. There are dialogue options throughout, and while they don't generally seem to affect what happens in any real way, you feel as though you at least have a say in where the story is going. When the option to launch a couple of side missions happened, I thought it might make the campaign last that little bit longer, but that wasn't the case. However, finding evidence throughout the main story missions will allow you to take part in these. You may not find all the evidence, but that's okay. It doesn't affect how things turn out, but it will give you a little more time to enjoy the story. Whether you're piloting a chopper in Vietnam, surviving until a pickup on a rooftop in Cuba, or meeting operatives in a coffee shop in East Berlin, it gives you a nice introduction to how the guns handle and what you'll likely be getting up to in the multiplayer. Many of the cutscenes on PS4 suffered from some serious lagging. It meant that many of the early cutscenes had the voice acting completely out of sync with what I was watching, having a bit of an adverse impact on some of the story beats. It got better as the campaign went on, but there were still problems leading all the way up until the end. It's worth noting that the PS5 version doesn't seem to have this issue at all. Multiplayer in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War features a triumphant mosaic of modes, customization, and action. Old favourites return such as Team Deathmatch, Hardpoint and Kill Confirmed, but the new modes are some of my favourite. Combined Arms takes place on a bigger battlefield where 10 teams of 4 work together to secure points across the map. Vehicles play a big part allowing you to travel on a snowmobile or take out enemies in a tank. Fire Team Dirty Bomb has you searching for bomb sites and killing enemies to find uranium. Once you've filled the bottoms with enough uranium, you can set them off and win the match. VIP Escort plays out like Search and Destroy and if you're not playing with friends it's nowhere near as fun. The main objective is to guide your VIP to an extraction point. It requires talking to each other and deciding on the best course of action, so if you're with strangers who are muted or don't want to talk, it can take a miracle to pull it off. Oh. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is as fast paced as it's ever been, and the maps so far seem to encourage speed while also offering plenty of hiding places and flora to take advantage of. With new maps promised for free as the months roll on, I hope we get many more that offer the freedom that some of the current ones do. The customization in the multiplayer is excellent, offering tons of choices to create your class through unlockable items as you level up. Score streaks return in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, meaning you're rewarded based on your score rather than how many kills you get. Some of the modes in multiplayer don't always rely on kills, so completing objectives means you'll be able to launch a spy plane or call in a care package or aerial assault if you fulfil your score quota. Zombies has always been a fun escape for me, but I've never spent as much time with it as I usually do in the multiplayer, but this year there seems to be more depth in the exceptional D Machina story arc. Playing as an operative of CIA-backed Team Requiem, you head to an abandoned World War II bunker to uncover the mysteries within. It's essentially a horde mode, but with each new wave, you'll move further and further deeper into the bunker, unlocking more areas while fighting off increasingly aggressive zombie hordes. 
The more you survive, the more you unlock. You can purchase ammo for your weapons and use the workbench to buy grenades and more to keep the undead at bay. Zombies drop buffs such as insta-kill which lets you kill them with a single bullet, double XP and nuke which wipes out every single zombie that's still trying to maul you to death. What I loved about zombies is that your progression carries over to multiplayer and vice versa. Your rank will increase between the two and it helps you level up regardless of which mode is your favourite. For those thinking that there might not be enough online content to get stuck into, you'll be relieved to know that Treyarch and Raven Software have delivered in spades. On PS4, the visuals are still incredible. Character animations were faultless outside of the campaign cutscenes and there's amazing attention to detail in the varied environments and weapons. Handling the wide range of guns is also sublime. Each gun packs a punch to varying degrees with the LW3 Tundra being the absolute best. Whenever an opportunity arises to use a sniper rifle, I'm there. Pressing down on the left stick to focus slows down the chaos and pulling back on the right stick to fire off a bullet packs a lot of weight as you see it fly towards the enemy's head. On PS5, this is obviously even better and the haptic feedback with the triggers means that every gun feels slightly different to fire with, offering resistance to every bite on that trigger. When you have an empty clip, you'll feel a hollow clunk that signifies it's time to reload and it's fantastic. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is jam-packed with online features, providing hours of playtime and even more customising of your loadouts. While the campaign isn't as strong as the original Black Ops, I still enjoyed where it took me, even with the trippy finale that I wasn't expecting. It's a visual treat with great handling and attention to detail in the littlest of places. The multiplayer is excellent, especially zombies, and the cross-progression between all online modes is a fine addition that keeps you levelling up and unlocking new stuff. For someone who has spent less and less time with Call of Duty over the years, Cold War is likely the one to pull me in again and keep me playing and playing until the next one. And for that reason, I'm going to score it a 9 out of 10. Hey everyone, that was Chris White's review of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Uh, and if you're going to check it out, well, let us know in the comments. We like to hear from you guys. You can also check out our Patreon if you want to support us that way. We appreciate it. And if you like this video, go ahead, give it a like, maybe hit that subscribe button, maybe even tag the bell icon too so that you're kept up to date with all the news, reviews, previews, videos, what have you, that we post on this channel. In the meantime, I've been Mick Fraser for God is a Geek. That was Chris White's review of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And you guys have been lovely. Bye.